going to be doing my DIY fireplace video. I know I have told you guys I was going to be sharing this with you. It is finally that time I can tell you exactly how we did it. Insert clips of whole like before, during, and the after. I'll just kind of talk you through the whole process as well as show you in depth what we did. If you don't know and this is your first time on my channel, we actually bought a fixer upper back in October, renovated the entire inside ourselves, bought it sight unseen so we had no idea what we were working with. So I'm going to take you along Long on a house that had no fireplace and how to create your own DIY fireplace in your own home. So the first thing is going to be the before. I'm going to be inserting some photos for you guys to see. You will see here that this living room actually had just one window on the right hand wall and that was it. Very plain, very basic, nothing fancy going on. There was also a wall that separated it that we decided to knock down and create our kitchen so we could have a whole open concept kitchen living room area. In doing that, I knew the kitchen, I was going to make it beautiful and I needed something in the living room to bring it up and make sure they were both kind of coinciding with each other and one didn't overpower the next. So I thought a fireplace would be the perfect way to do that, but not only add a fireplace, but also take out the existing window because that was centered of the room, and I thought that would be the perfect place for a fireplace, but I didn't want to compromise natural daylight. So what we did is I purchased some arch windows that went along the side that almost go floor to ceiling. They bring in so much light. They look absolutely beautiful. They are not yet done. We still have to add some molding to them, but just so you guys can get the idea of what we did in adding those and for the center we needed to decide how big what size we were going to do for a whole fireplace so you guys can see the before there was nothing but a window we had to close that out and then add siding on the exterior this way you wouldn't see just kind of a blank space back there so the whole before was no fireplace and now going into the during So the first thing you're going to want to do is decide on the size you would like the base of your fireplace to be, the width as well as the height. This will determine what you're going to be doing around it as far as molding, tiling, any type of design that you plan on going with. And based upon the width that you have, depending how large your living room space is, as well as the ceiling height that you have, you're going to go a bit different. So I'm not gonna give you the exact sizing that I use. If you happen to have a similar size living room, let me know in the comments below and I can give you specifics on the exact size if you wanna create the entire exact measurements of mine and can totally share that with you guys. But first determine how wide and how deep you would like your fireplace to be. So then you're going to create the base of it. Now, since we were working on this house, my husband, like I said, it was DIY. So he has a regular nine to five, then nights and weekends, he was working tirelessly on electrical, plumbing, brand new bathrooms, brand new kitchens, everything from start to finish. He's not a YouTuber, so he didn't know to film this part. So for the base, you guys, I'm just going to be showing you what it looked like after he created the base and inserted the insert of the fireplace. So he just basically took plywood, decided on the sizing that we wanted, and then he molded out and cut the sizing that we needed to create the base of the fireplace. Then for the insert, you can go as elaborate, as simple as you want. For my windows on the sides, as well as this fireplace insert, I saved so much money because I purchased them on Facebook Marketplace. The windows alone, each one, they're custom, so they would be over $1,000 if I were to purchase them myself at a window store, Home Depot, anywhere like that. And the fireplace inserts can run $500 and up, depending on what you're looking for. I was able to snag both arch windows for $500 and the fireplace insert for only a hundred bucks. So we really saved ourselves a lot of money there, not only DIYing, but as well as going on different areas to find sales and discounts, anything like that. These windows were brand new, so it's not like I was buying a used item and the fireplace was used once. After you're done creating the whole base of your fireplace and inserting the fireplace insert, which is going to give you gas, depending on what type you want to do, you could do gas, real fire, or what have you, that's totally personal preference. Um, then you are going to decide what you want to do as far as design. You can do tiling, you could do a trim of it, you can do stone, you can do a brick overlay, anything like that. Once you have the base, I would say this next step is up to you. 
Less tile, the easier, of course. So I went with just a trim of tile around the actual fireplace insert. I felt that this was something more classic, simple, and since this was a beginner project, we have never in our lives created a fireplace, I knew I wanted to go for something a little more simple. So we went ahead and I have herringbone tile in my kitchen. So because it flows with the whole living room, I wanted to add the herringbone tile in the fireplace as well. So we went with some Carrera marble, purchased that at Home Depot. I will have everything also that I can find that I purchased down in the description bar for those of you that are interested. And we went and placed a trim. At the top, oh, I did it a little bit thicker. And then the sides, I did a little bit thinner. For size reference, the sides are about four inches wide and at the top I did six inches wide. So my husband actually invested in one of those water saw cutters to cut our tile and everything like that. You guys can easily rent these things if you don't plan on doing many DIY projects, but because we still have our basement to redo and we, like I said, we did bathrooms ourselves, flooring, everything like that, we knew we wanted to invest in this piece, so totally up to you. You have a rent or a buy option, depending on how many projects and how much you're going to be using it. So with that saw cutter, you went ahead, cut our tile out, and then you're going to just basically mix your grout, cement, mix it all up, and place the tile along the wall of the fireplace exactly where you would like to have it. Like I said, we just did a trim border around the black fireplace insert. And for the next step after you put down your tile, it is time for molding. Now this you can go really fancy, you could go modern, you could go basic. This is going to add to the whole kind of aesthetic of your fireplace and how extensive. I personally love having a mantle on a fireplace because I love to decorate for the holidays and that is my favorite piece to add garlands and stocking holders and all that fun stuff. So depending on what you want to place on top of there, you're also going to determine how deep you would like that mantle to come out. So for us, we did 10 inches. I knew that would be perfect to fit some candle holders as well as the garland and anything like that that I want for decorating purposes. You can go for something even just like some raw wood material if you want to place it on there, depending once again on the whole design and aesthetic that you're going for. This was our first time. I wanted to keep it simple. I went with for a very basic trim, clean lines. This way if I'm going to be changing my look as well, it makes it a lot easier if you go for something more simple. I added some baseboard molding at the bottom because I wanted there to be some contrast and not be so flat because personally if you go for something more on the basis of just pure straight lines and no dimension, it is going to give more of a modern feel and I didn't want this to be a whole full on modern look. I want it to be a little more traditional. He has a nail gun, nails it all in, makes sure it's nice and secure and sturdy depending on what area you're going to be covering. Sometimes you're going to have to cut the wood at an angle. I'll be inserting some clips here of him cutting the molding and wood to basically work out perfectly for the size fireplace that we decided to do. Once you are done placing the molding, at this point you have your whole fireplace almost 100% complete it is now time to paint it. So you have various options when it comes to painting. You can go for just a basic paint color. I decided to go for something white since I think it goes really nicely with Carrera Marble. So just a basic white color painted that and you can go for green, blue, purple, whatever your color preference is. And a little suggestion to you guys because when I was designing this, my husband kind of started the project without asking me. So one, I would maybe do like a little ledge in a future fireplace renovation because I think that looks really pretty when decorating with lanterns that you see I use here. I kind of just kept them at the floor because I didn't have a base to kind of elevate it as I would have liked since he started that process without me. I had no choice that was already started at that point. And then as far as the exterior, already have in mind kind of what you want. I would have loved to stain the wood and do a wood stain and then be able to stain the arch windows. But unfortunately, since we picked the plywood, he thought we were going to just paint it. 
We went for just basic standard plywood. It's not the best quality, so if you plan on staining it, it one, wouldn't stain properly, and two, it would really cheapen the look and it just wouldn't grab and look like a very rich wood. You would have to then go and buy a bit more expensive, better quality. It's more meant to be stained and used for aesthetic pleasing purposes. This one, of course, did not look so great if we would have stained it, so I had to go with a color, and as you see here, I just went ahead and painted it white. This now completed the whole fireplace. As you guys can see, it was pretty simple to do. My husband said he would totally do more of these in the future if we move and anything like that because it was really simple and he could go a little more extensive next time. Be sure to thumbs up this video if you guys enjoyed and you want to see future DIY projects. Leave comments down below if you have any specific things that I may not have answered in this video, anything that you may have for Mike that I can ask him to answer for you guys, and I will talk to you all in my next one. Bye!